There's a saying that goes, seeing is believing. But these photos are so incredible, they're almost unbelievable. From the first permanent photograph to a terrifying mummy, here are 20 photos that shocked the world. Number 20. The first programmable electronic computer. The IBM 405 isn't a computer, so let's look at the first one. The ENIAC, short for Electronic Numerical Integrator and Computer. The ENIAC was the first programmable electronic general-purpose digital computer. It was completed in 1945, and let me tell you just how much of a behemoth it was. John Mochley and J. Presper Eckert developed it at the University of Pennsylvania. It was originally designed to calculate artillery firing tables for the United States Army during World War II. At the end of its development, ENIAC could be reprogrammed to solve a full range of computing problems. However, it wasn't that easy due to its plugboard-based programming. Imagine having a computer you need to unplug and shut down for days if you want to work on another problem using it. That's how ENIAC operated. Despite this drawback, ENIAC was still the most powerful computer of its time, which says quite a lot about how much we've improved in the field of computers and technology. Considering the ENIAC occupied a 1,500-square-foot room and consisted of 40 panels, each 8 feet high and 2 feet wide, I'm thankful for the sleek and modern computers we have today. Without this cumbersome tech, we probably would have seen modern computers a lot later. Number 19. Smiling Worm Have you ever wondered what lurks at the bottom of the ocean? Just look at this creature, discovered by Roman Fedortsov, a Russian deep-sea fisherman who has earned a reputation on social media for revealing the most monstrous and nightmare-inducing creatures from the abyss. Among his many discoveries was this smiling worm. This marine bristle worm was captured during one of Fedortsov's trawling expeditions. If you think it looks prehistoric, you're right. A creature belonging to the family of polychaetes, these worms are known for their resilience and the fact that they've survived five mass extinctions already. These worms are notable for their bristles, called kite, which aid in movement and burrowing. What captured the attention of people online, however, is its smiling face with its retractable fangs, which it moves in a horrifying manner. This worm might look like a creature with a smiling face, but we're lucky that these creatures live deep in the abyss. Otherwise, a simple swim in the ocean could be a terrifying experience. Number 18. Aztec Skull Tower. Constructed in the late 15th century in the Aztec capital Tenochtitlan, now Mexico City, the Aztec Skull Tower is exactly what it sounds like, a massive tower made out of human skulls. The structure was essentially a massive rack made from lime and stone, displaying thousands of human skulls. These skulls were those of war captives and sacrificial victims, believed to appease the gods, particularly the sun god Huitzilopochtli, and ensure the continuity of the world. Recent archaeological excavations at the site of Templo Mayor have unearthed further intriguing details about this tower. Initially, it was thought that the skulls belonged only to male warriors. However, findings have revealed the inclusion of women's and children's skulls, which means that the Aztecs weren't picky about who they would sacrifice. Despite the macabre and grim nature of the structure, researchers found out that the entire tower was meticulously crafted, with skulls embedded into the tower in circles. In fact, even the Spanish conquistadors, upon their arrival, were floored and horrified by this display. Now, if you're wondering if this tower still exists, yes, it remains a historical attraction in Mexico City. Number 17. Nikola Tesla's Transmitter At the turn of the 20th century, Nikola Tesla conducted experiments at his Colorado Springs laboratory. This photo is quite befitting for a mad scientist's laboratory, isn't it? But what exactly is happening here? This structure that looks straight out of a sci-fi novel is a magnifying transmitter, also known as the Tesla coil. Using this, Tesla explored the realm of high-voltage and high-frequency electricity, creating impressive artificial lightning that could be seen and heard from miles away. This device could generate potentials of 12 to 20 million volts and create electrical arcs visualized as lightning up to 140 feet long. Tesla aimed to transmit electrical energy wirelessly over vast distances. In one dramatic demonstration, he managed to light up lamps 26 miles away without using any connecting wires, illustrating the potential of wireless energy transmission. However, his experiments also resulted in some unwanted consequences, including electrical disturbances around Colorado Springs. Sometimes, sparks also appeared on horse hooves and water pipes, which the locals weren't too happy about. On one occasion, the device inadvertently drew so much power that it destroyed a local power generator, which Tesla had to replace at his own expense. Tragically, although Nikola Tesla is a renowned name in science, his life wasn't as celebrated, at least not until his death. At the end of his life, Tesla was a little-known man feeding pigeons in a park. 
he took his last breath destitute and alone in a New York City hotel room in 1943. Number 16. Takabuti. Most people recognize Tutankhamun, but one of the lesser-known Egyptian mummies also has an exciting story. Takabuti is an Egyptian woman who lived in ancient Thebes around 600 BC during Egypt's 25th dynasty. She was a woman of high status, and thousands of years after her death, her mummy was excavated and brought to Belfast in 1834, making her the first Egyptian mummy to reach Northern Ireland. That said, her unwrapping in 1835 turned into a media sensation. Researchers and historians have since been piecing together her life story and the circumstances of her untimely death. You see, while we're confident that Takabuti was indeed of high status, some believed that she was the mistress of a wealthy household. Her death, however, was very abrupt. Recent CT scans showed a stab wound in detail, suggesting that her death was quick and unexpected. Further intrigue was added by genetic analyses, indicating that her ancestry was more closely related to European populations than to modern Egyptians, a rarity in ancient Egyptian findings. Moreover, Takabuti's physical traits were also unusual. She had an extra tooth and an extra vertebra, which are rare conditions in the general population. Her hair, naturally auburn, was styled and curled, contrasting sharply with the typical shaven heads of her peers. Today, Takabuti's mummy is one of the most popular exhibits in the Ulster Museum in Belfast. Her life and the cause of her death continue to be a mystery to this day. Number 15. The building that moved. Would you believe that an entire building can be moved? After all, it would be too inconvenient and pricey to build another building when you can relocate the first one. Sounds impossible, right? However, in 1930, the entire Indiana Bell Telephone building in Indianapolis pulled off what many believed was impossible. It was rotated 90 degrees and moved to a new location, all while its employees continued to work inside without interrupting their essential services. No, I'm not even kidding. The building, weighing a hefty 11,000 tons and housing several stories, was initially slated for demolition to make way for a new headquarters. However, Kurt Vonnegut Sr., the architect and father of famous author Kurt Vonnegut Jr., proposed an ingenious solution to save the building by moving it. For a month, from October 12th to November 14th, 1930, the building was meticulously shifted 52 feet south along Meridian Street and rotated to face New York Street. Of course, a lot of planning was involved to accomplish this feat, with a combination of hand-operated jacks and a steam engine which moved the building a mere three-eighths of an inch with each stroke. Workers used a system of rails and hydraulic jacks to lift and rotate the structure, ensuring that all utility connections such as telephone lines, water pipes, and electrical cables were maintained throughout the process. This allowed the 600 employees inside to continue their work undisturbed as the building moved. Number 14. Woman buried with her husband's heart. There's a saying in love that goes, until death do us part. However, a couple who lived in the 17th century wanted to never part, even in the afterlife. Louise de Quengo was a French noblewoman who lived in the 17th century. She passed away in 1656 and was buried in a lead coffin, but she wasn't alone. When interred, along with her remains was the heart of her lover, Toussaint Perrien, a knight of Brafilac. This heart was not metaphorically but quite literally with her, encased in its own smaller lead coffin placed carefully within Louise's coffin. When her remains were found by researchers a few years ago, many were quite touched by how devoted the husband and wife were to each other. While this practice might seem different and a little macabre for people today, the practice of separating and burying organs separately was not uncommon among the European elite during this period. The hearts, often embalmed, were sometimes sent to distant locations to be buried in cherished spots or family crypts. However, Louise's choice to keep her husband's heart close by in her own grave is a touching choice by a wife longing for her husband. Louise's death came a year after her husband's, during which time she had taken vows and entered a convent. Despite living a year on earth without her husband, it's clear where her heart remained. Number 13. Flying in the 1930s. Have you ever wondered what flying on an airplane was like when commercial aviation was still in its early stages? Luckily, plenty of photos allow us to get a glimpse of what flying was like in that era. Most of the time, people are surprised to see just how different flying on a commercial airplane was in the 1930s. At the time, traveling by airplane was an experience exclusive only to the wealthy, and by that, I mean those at the top of the pyramid. Unlike today, where flights are made accessible, air travel was a luxury primarily enjoyed by the wealthy or adventurous business people, as it was much more expensive than other forms of transport like trains or ships. On board, the experience was quite different from today. Early aircraft were not pressurized, which meant they flew at lower altitudes and could be quite noisy and cold. However, by the 1930s, Improvements like soundproofing, 
in-air heating, and more comfortable seating started to transform passenger experiences. While it was more spacious, the chairs, however, were far less comfortable than the ones we have today. If you're scared of turbulence while flying on modern planes, just imagine how much worse it was flying on a plane in the 1930s. Number 12. The Relic of Burr Hooker Yes, you're looking at a giant blackened finger. This mummified giant finger is also known as the Relic of Burr Hooker. It's hard to believe, but this is one of the alleged pieces of evidence that giants existed in the past. Allegedly discovered by Swiss club owner Gregor Spori in Egypt in 1988, this finger is a staggering 35 centimeters in length, which could mean its owner was a giant who stood between 16 and 19 feet tall. According to Spori, the relic was shown to him by Najib, a descendant of grave robbers who possessed it as a family heirloom. The finger itself was contained in a wooden box, and alongside it were documents, including an X-ray from the 1960s, which confirmed the finger's proportions and authenticity. The documents featured Arabic and Latin text, further intriguing Spori, who paid to photograph and examine this enigmatic artifact. The relic stirred up discussions around the existence of giants, touching on figures such as the Nephilim mentioned in biblical texts and other worldwide mythologies that speak of similarly enormous beings. Today, the relic of Burr Hooker is dismissed as a hoax rather than a real archaeological find, but many continue to believe that it proves the existence of giants. Number 11. The Screaming Mummies would you visit a museum filled with screaming mummies? Most people wouldn't, but for some reason, many people from across the world have developed a fascination for the screaming mummies of Guanajuato. The mummies of Guanajuato are known for being frozen in looks of fear and anguish, as if all of them were screaming in pain when they took their last breaths. But the reality behind these mummies is far more complex. The mummies displayed in the Museum of the Mummies in Mexico were originally interred in Guanajuato, Mexico, before they were disinterred between 1870 and 1958. With a local tax being required for the dead to stay buried in the local cemetery, those struggling to make ends meet couldn't afford to keep their loved ones from being disinterred from the cemetery. Most of the remains removed from their supposed resting places were stored in a building. Coincidentally, the climate of Guanajuato made the mummification of these remains possible. Even though the law requiring burial tax was abolished in 1958, the mummies of Guanajuato remain displayed to this day. But why are these mummies forever frozen in an agonized expression? This striking feature is not due to the mummies dying in agony, but rather the natural results of decomposition processes that cause the muscles in the jaw to contract and create a gaping mouth. Despite this explanation, it doesn't make these mummies any less unsettling to look at. Number 10. A nun buried face down. There have been several times in history when archaeologists discovered skulls and remains that were buried face down. Most of these remains were found across Poland with people in old centuries fearing the return of the undead. This one, however, is quite different. In 2015, archaeologists excavated a church site in Oxford and discovered 92 skeletons dating from 600 to 900 years ago. One of them was particularly intriguing because she was buried face down. What's more perplexing is that the skeletons were buried in the grounds of Littlemore Priory, a nunnery founded in 1110. For reasons unknown to us, this nun was buried face down, possibly indicating a perceived sin. It was said that in 1524, the nunnery was forced to shut down because several nuns, who were supposed to devote their entire selves to their religion, indulged in sin. We might never know the real reason why this nun was buried face down, but there's a story here that's waiting to be uncovered. Number 9. Misbehaving Students in History Humanity has drastically changed over the years, but it seems that we're not entirely different from our ancestors. Just as how students and youngsters today often misbehave, even teachers back then had to have their own method of disciplining kids. This fragment might look ordinary, but in reality, it contains remnants of a punishment for unruly students in ancient Egypt 2,000 years ago. Recently, archaeologists have unearthed over 18,000 of these pottery fragments, which are known as ostraca. This revealed that naughty pupils were made to write lines as a form of discipline. These ostraca were essentially the notepads of ancient Egypt, cheaper and more readily available than papyrus, and were used for everything from jotting down trade records to schoolwork. Some of these shards found in what seems to have been an educational setting show repetitive inscriptions, much like how today's school children might be tasked with writing, I will not talk in class on the chalkboard. These ancient students etched similar phrases into clay. No matter how advanced we are as a civilization, kids will remain the same. Number 8. Terrifying Antarctic Creature now here's a photo of a terrifying creature that was recently discovered in the icy waters of the Antarctic. It might look like something out of this world, but in reality, this fella is a strawberry feather star. 
This species of feather star was identified in 2023 and was named after the fruit because of its central body's resemblance, complete with 20 sprawling arms. It really looks like a monstrous creature. Lucky for us, it only grows up to 7 inches long and doesn't pose a threat to humans. What's more, this alien creature also resides in depths ranging from 200 to as deep as 3,000 feet. Number 7. Massive Woodlouse. This is Bathonomus yucatanensis, or at least the fond nickname it received, Vanilla Vader. This gigantic woodlouse relative is quite unsettling to look at. As you might have already guessed, these creatures were recently discovered in the ocean, specifically in the depths of the Gulf of Mexico. The Vanilla Vader, scientifically named Bathonomus yucatanensis, measures a staggering 10 inches long, making it 25 times bigger than typical land-dwelling woodlice, usually just a fraction of an inch in size. This colossal size has given the Vanilla Vader the title of being one of the largest isopods known to exist, a true behemoth of the deep sea. Well, that's another reason why the abyss of our ocean is far scarier than space. Number 6. Early IBM Accounting Machine Electronic and computer engineers today don't have to deal with bulky and annoying hardware, but in the past, engineers were expected to tend to a big box of coiled wires. This photo, captured by Berenice Abbott around the late 1940s, shows an engineer working on an IBM 405, an accounting machine introduced by the famed IBM company in 1948. It might look like the very first computer, but this is actually an alphabetic accounting machine. But what use did this massive machine have? Just as its name suggests, this took care of accounting processes. From 1890 until the 1970s, punched cards were utilized in data processing. The IBM 405 was used for inventory, payroll, and accounting. Typically, these cards had 80 columns holding stored data from the date, vendor number, amount, and order number. At a time when computers weren't readily available, the IBM 405 processed and totaled the amounts punched in these cards. Visually, the IBM 405 was a far cry from the sleek design of modern computers. It was large, bulky, and filled with mechanical parts. The system operated through a complex arrangement of electromechanical counters, relays, and type bars. No one from today's time would think that IBM 405 was used for data processing. With its array of wires and mechanical linkages, to an untrained eye, the IBM 405 might just look like a tangled web of components. Number 5. A perfectly preserved 2,600-year-old brain. All right, does anyone know what happens to your brain after death? Well, usually, moments before your death, neurotransmitters, chemical substances used by our brain to communicate with the rest of our body, will flood the brain. This will cause a spike in brain activity before crashing. At this point, your brain activity is as good as non-existent. Five minutes after death, a process known as a brain tsunami, or more formally terminal spreading depolarization, will occur. A wave of neuron activity hits all brain areas simultaneously before moving outwards like a wave. This is the catalyst for the breakdown of the brain's electrochemicals, essentially everything that's making your brain function. I'm not walking you through the entire process, but minutes after death, decomposition will occur. Add to the fact that the brain is about 80% water, it rots and decomposes faster than the rest of our body. Within 5 to 10 years, it will completely disappear. And yet, for some bizarre reason, the Heslington brain remains intact despite the fact that it's been over 2,600 years since its owner's death. Discovered near York, England, this ancient brain, enclosed within a skull, has retained its soft, spongy form in a way that defies the typical rapid decomposition process of brain tissue. This perplexes scientists immensely, at least until recently. Researchers found that the brain proteins had folded into dense, compact aggregates. This unusual clumping acted almost like a protective shield, preserving the brain structure over millennia. You see, typically, enzymes produced after death break down brain tissue almost immediately, but in this case, something halted that process early on. We have yet to determine if this is due to environmental conditions where the brain was interred, making the Heslington brain an enigma. Number 4. The Skull Tower of Niche If you're familiar with the turbulent history of Serbia, perhaps you're already familiar with the Skull Tower of Niche. This eerie structure is located in the city of Niche, and its backstory is spine-chilling. You see, this skull tower is made from the skulls of Serbian rebels who fell during the first Serbian uprising against the Ottoman Empire in 1809. The origins of Skull Tower begin with the Battle of Sigur, where Serbian forces, led by Stephen Sindelic, faced overwhelming Ottoman troops. Despite the audacious act by Sindelic, he was defeated. As if this wasn't enough, the Ottoman commander, Hershid Pasha, ordered the construction of the tower using the skulls of the fallen Serbian fighters to serve as a lesson to anyone else who would rebel. Initially, 
the tower included 952 skulls embedded into the walls of a structure that stood about four meters high. This horrifying sight served as a brutal warning of the consequences of rebellion against the Ottoman Empire. Over time, many skulls were removed, some by family members reclaiming their deceased loved ones, others by erosion or theft. In 1892, the significance of Skull Tower changed as the Ottomans withdrew from Serbia. A chapel was then built in the area to preserve and honor the memory of those who fought for Serbian independence. Number 3. Abandoned Marx Generator People who see this part of the Russian forest near Istra, not too far from Moscow, are always stumped. This colossal structure makes up the Marx Generator, also known as the Soviet Lightning Machine. Originally, this facility, filled with huge Tesla coils and a massive power capability, functioned as a critical site for high-voltage testing, contributing significantly to military and scientific research. However, following the dissolution of the Soviet Union in 1991, the facility's active use sharply declined due to drastic shifts in scientific priorities and economic hardships faced by the new states. And now, it's abandoned and forgotten, treated as a dystopian-like location in the isolated Russian forest. Its last known operation was in 2014, and this dormant lightning machine that once held the capacity to power the entire Russian territory is now slowly being reclaimed by nature. The area where the structure is located is fenced off and guarded by dogs, although with its height, the Marx generator is obvious from outside the surrounding fence. Number 2. First Permanent Photograph In 1822, photography was invented by Frenchman Nice for Neeps. It has evolved enough for us to snap a picture whenever and wherever we want. That's why the very first permanent photograph is so significant. It paved the way for modern photography. Now, if I asked you to picture what the world's first permanent photograph looked like, this is probably not what you imagined. Taken in 1826, this photo was captured by Nice for Neeps himself from the window of his estate at St. Ludovarenus, France. Back then, photography was still in its early stages. In fact, this particular photo was captured using a technique called heliography. This method involves a camera obscura and a pewter plate coated with bitumen of Judea. It was through these materials that the very first photograph that survived the test of time was produced. This bitumen hardened in exposure to light, and the unhardened material could be washed away, leaving a permanent image. The result was a grainy view of the courtyard and outbuildings of his estate, which Neeps titled View from the Window at Le Gras. What's so shocking about this photo? Before this, images could be projected via camera obscura, but they couldn't be captured. While this photo isn't impressive by today's standards, this marked the beginning of modern cameras. But the most shocking part of this photo is the fact that the method used to capture this required a long exposure time of about eight hours. It's time for today's topic. This photo shocked the entire internet. This is what the drone found while exploring the expanse of the Russian mountains. A videographer decided to use his drone to hopefully capture a panoramic clip of the landscape. While monitoring the footage from his handheld gear, he noticed something moving beside the mountain, initially blending with the landscape. An unknown object momentarily revealed itself in the drone camera. Perplexed, the videographer tried to take a closer look, but when he tried to bring the drone closer to the said anomaly, it seemingly disappeared from view, either blending with its surroundings again or perhaps moving somewhere else. The videographer shared this photo online, hoping someone could give him a few clues about what he saw. Some believed that perhaps he was merely seeing things and mistaking a boulder for a moving entity, while others presented theories from paranormal, extraterrestrial, and logical ones, a UFO, a secret government surveillance vehicle, a mountain animal, or something we have yet to understand. We still don't know. Number 1. Mysterious Japanese Mermaid Among Japan's many archaeological treasures is this mermaid mummy. In fact, you might have encountered this alleged mermaid while scrolling on the internet before. Discovered and currently housed in a temple in Okayama Prefecture, this mummy measures about one meter long and exhibits an eerie combination of human-like features and a fish's tail. The story goes that this mummy was caught in a fishing net off the coast of Shikoku Island between 1736 and 1741. It was later passed down through generations, eventually finding its home at Injuin Temple. The temple's chief priest hoped that the mermaid would bring health benefits, a belief known in some Japanese lore and legends. Recently, however, Researchers from the Karashiki University of Science and the Arts have taken a keen interest in this artifact to study its composition and origins. Through various scientific methods, including CT scans and DNA testing, they hope that analyzing it would end the mystery behind this alleged mythical creature once and for all. The mermaid mummy has maintained its nails, teeth, and hair over the centuries, with an expression that some describe as a scream. This has led to it being a subject of veneration, with some believing it possesses powers related to immortality 
a theme common in Japanese folklore where mermaids or ninjio are often seen as bearers of misfortune or harbingers of epidemics, but also as creatures that could grant everlasting life if their flesh was consumed. And yes, there have been records that some people have tried consuming the flesh of creatures they thought were mermaids, which unfortunately most likely weren't real mermaids. The scientific verdict on this specimen? It turned out that this Japanese mermaid was an ungodly combination of several creatures stitched together to form this curious creature. Initially, researchers thought that the mermaid's body belonged to a monkey, but it turned out that its torso was made from cloth, paper, and cotton. However, traces of pufferfish and unknown mammals were also used to create this horrifying creature. Are there any historical topics you'd like to hear more about? Feel free to let me know in the comments down below. And if you know other surprising historical discoveries, make sure to leave them in the comments. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on the screen right now, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, everybody.